Welcome back to Aliens Watching Reality TV. I'm Erica. And I'm Josh. And we are watching, actually we already watched, Love is Blind Season 5 Episode 7. The Bombshell Episode. Wish I hadn't watched it. You wish you hadn't watched it? Wish I hadn't. Yeah, I now have to remove it all from my brain, the kind of things that happened, the, the little petty little cruelties that unfolded. There, Yeah, I feel like people are finally revealing their full true selves. Um, they've just, mm -hmm. even, you know, a great masker or manipulator can only really keep a perfect facade for so long. Um, and it's such an intense mm -hmm. process like this with so many people and so, you know, there's so many factors. Like by this point, mm -hmm. some cracks are going to show and <laughs> some cracks are going to wide do open. We see some cracks. Yeah. It's like it's not cracks, it's like crevasses. You see glaciers? Those glaciers have these yeah. giant like holes. Absolutely. That's kind of the thing that. It's like a glacier crevasse. You fall in those, you don't get out. <laughs> no, you don't. And the kind of shit that we hear is like that. Um, but there's some stuff that is related to relationships, and there's just some stuff that is just about a person's basic human decency. Like, some people just turn out to be douchebags. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot of people in this episode, so. And most of them are douchebags. And yet, I still like watching yeah, the show. Isn't that is, weird? Yeah, I mean, douchebags can be entertainment. Yeah. Entertaining. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um. Uh, anyway, speaking of douchebags, we open with Uche, and he and Aaliyah are meeting. Which, first of all, they completely gloss over the fact that, like, oh, this is their grand reveal. This is the first time they're seeing each other. <laughs> But like they don't even flinch. It's like they it was like, oh yeah. I mean, I, I'll wait. I just realized they probably looked each other up on social media, so they know. Yeah, that's literally the thing that as you were describing that, I was like, yes, and then I was like, hmm, no, they probably looked at each other on social media. I mean, it's still like a little bit of a moment, but maybe they're both, you know, pretty honest in their social media pictures. <laughs> yeah, some people. Yeah, I mean, they're both good looking. Some people are mind blowing. Yeah, you meet them in real life, and you're like, huh, like. You I've edit your picture so much I can't write it. I, what? Yeah. Am I like, am I, what about me? Am I like the same that I look in person? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I'm same, same with you. Like you look the same in person. Um, yeah, it's weird. But I have met people who, yeah. Yeah, there people usually people tell that me I met and I was like, you are not the person that I yeah. thought I was going to meet, but hello. Like, especially like <laughs> when I was doing like influencer stuff, people would always be like so surprised that I looked the same in person. Um, but it was because like other people were editing their photos and I just didn't even know how to do it yeah. or like what to do. No, it was like, it this isn't like a, I'm some pr principled moral stance on my part. I just like. I don't know how to make myself look yeah. better. <laughs> so I'm just like, settle for this. I just exist. Like I, I shave my beard when it's scratchy. <laughs> like, and, and I, I'm not trying to say I'm hot. I'm, what I'm trying to say is like what autistic people usually don't know any of this shit. We're just like trying to exist. And yeah, I did realize yesterday that like, I hear girls talking about the, like the massive difference in like makeup styles from like 2016 to now. Cause sometimes people joke about like, like for example, when Taylor finally broke up with JP, I saw several people joke about like, I would have worn like full 2016 makeup to that like last meeting, like oh my contour God. cut crease and everything. And now it's like a much more like yeah. brushed up brow, soft, like more natural kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but like I always, There's a I always do my makeup exactly the same. I learned how to do it um, a long time yeah. ago, and I might learn little new things every now and then, but not really. Um, I even when I've really tried to be like, how do I do something different? I can't. I like, and so I do the same show. Of my hair for years and years and decades and decades. I've always had long hair my entire yeah. life. There is something to the. Uh, Autistic people don't like change thing. 
or something to that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so Alia and Uche, um, they are on different vibes. Were you surprised that Alia came into it being like, I still love you and want to be with you? Because I was. Uh, no. I feel like it's because Alia was more irked by Lydia. She was not really irked by Uche. She just was. I mean, imagine the situation. You know who you want to marry from the pods. So you're not interested in the other guys in the pods. But every time you come back to the women's section, there is Lydia. And she's like, so let me tell you everything you need to know about Uche. Yeah, but obviously we saw it. <laughs> like, That's the thing, though. I, 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 and they had a I fight. Know. They had a fight. So That's true. That's something we've read that like it's it wasn't shown. So but they had me, like, it a was like massive fight where Lydia was screaming expletives at her and stuff. Like it went big. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, listen, you needed to protect yourself and you did the right thing. You you needed to be secure. Um afterwards, yeah, sure, you want to meet Uche, you want to meet So Uche. the reason the reason um, I was surprised, but I shouldn't have been, but the reason I was surprised is is not because of anything prior to that because yeah, I, I know Lydia was a problem not him. It's how he talked to her on the fucking phone after she left. Like that yeah. for me would have like I would never let a man talk to me like that and then get yeah. back together. Like I mean I So I just like it was unthinkable I, to me at first that she would have been she would have heard that same conversation because she was in it and then been like, Yeah, I still want this guy. Because like I feel like there's he's gonna talk going to you like this Alia. all the time think, for the rest I of your think, life. Like you can't truly want that. I think this may be a pattern. I think this may be a pattern that she's just repeating. I think she's going for the same for kind sure. of guy. I mean, that means like she has had people treat her like this before. And that seems yeah. normal to her. And that's sad. Because this is not normal. Oh like God, nobody no. gets to talk to you like that on the phone. And then during this conversation in the restaurant, he's just, he's again, a, he's extremely a- unreasonable. Just extremely unreasonable. Completely does not try to understand her side of things yeah. um when he does understand like when he pretends to understand her side of things um he just <sighs> he is a lot more interested in proving that he's morally superior to her than he's interested in getting her back or like reestablishing a relationship this is all about Thank you. He went there. How amazing and awesome Uche is. Yeah, he went there <laughs> just to rip her a new one. He went there for the emotional satisfaction of being able to hurt her after she hurt him. And yeah, because like there's no there's no love in his face while he's there. Like it's a very it's cold and also because I was thinking, okay, let's say I'm in, I'm in Uche's position. The fir- I think the first fucking question I would have is, like, are you okay? Like, what happened in the pause or, I mean, in the, like, women's yeah. area that made it so horrible? I would be concerned about what had happened to her that had made the situation that unbearable. And he doesn't even seem to think about that. He never asks about it. He's all about himself. And he's so sure all the time that his feelings are correct, that they're, his feelings are facts. And he and that, like, everything is Aaliyah's fault. It's really, like, and I think, unfortunately, a big reason why she should stay far away from him forever is that, like, when he, I mean, he, it's appropriate use of the word at this point. He does gaslight her. He twists reality Mm -hmm. so that she is the bad guy and she does believe it and that sucks because he's just talking that's why i feel like she's just repeating a pattern i feel like she's repeating a pattern she's yeah she cannot tell the difference and 
this, I don't want to be like the psychiatrist or like the therapist or whatever. And I don't want to diagnose anyone, but yeah, I, I say diagnose. I don't want to like try to assume what kind of event in her life made her want to be with people who degrade her. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. But this is a very, it's a very similar situation. I mean, unfortunately, to, to it's the last. a safe assumption that any woman has had um, men in her life who were cruel and abusive and scary. Like, I hope that she, so like, that's probably, I hope that she puts, yeah, I hope that she starts to associate this behavior with unacceptability. Yeah, I do hope the, the, like, Maybe now experiencing the show along with the audience, like getting to see people's reactions and stuff. Yeah. Um, getting to see like how people were on her side and not his. Um, it's harder to be gaslit when you have I think the it, crowd I think on. It might help, like when you're, I hope so anyways. Help like reinforce her understanding of reality where she'd be like, oh, so I wasn't <laughs> totally misreading everything. Like he – because he has twisted her mind around. And I know that's like – it can be – especially like even this sounds I don't know this sounds weird but like even as an intelligent and um and like strong person you can start to doubt your own feelings because um you're trying to be fair and you're overly fair to other people's uh yeah expression of events you're too worried about someone else's feelings. You are way too worried. She's about, definitely. Yeah. She should about, worry less about his feelings and more about hers. Because yeah, he doesn't fucking give a shit about her feelings. basically trampling on her feelings. While yeah. he's like, boohoo, I'm the we'll victim. You cares. didn't even think about me. Yeah, it was so. Yeah. The part where he was like, turn off the phone. I don't want to talk to her anymore. Right. Like, these people are not your personal assistants. Like they are, they work here for the show. That's where, like, it makes like, me really sad that after that, she would go to a restaurant and yeah. her opening line would be like, I love you. And I still want to marry you. Like that man is yeah. horrible. And he has shown uh, consistently, like this is how he is a lot. This is how he is on maybe a daily basis. Every time you yeah. do anything wrong, or even if you don't do anything wrong, but just anything goes wrong, he's going to talk to you like this. And that n- nobody should put up with. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's just like, even just thinking right. about it sounds so fucking yeah, awful. Yeah, 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 nobody. It reminds me of this article I read about somebody going to interview uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> Some journalist went to interview the republican candidate vivek ramaswamy okay i don't know i don't know anything about ramas in the background some some person was cleaning and vivek literally told told this journalist to tell the cleaning person in his home to keep it quiet <laughs> like he couldn't deign to talk to and the journalist person? Yeah, and the journalist actually went and <laughs> told the cleaning, like, it, like the level of that's kind of the level of privilege that he showed in that phone conversation. It's just like, <laughs> I mean, I do think, and yeah, I'm, I'm very comfortable, uh, you know, saying when I think autistic people are autistic because I, I have an innate ability to do it as an autistic person, but like every other thing, I'm really not gonna. Just be like, yep, that person has BPD. That person has NPD. I'm not going to do that. But I will say, yeah. he definitely, he has, um, in, in my mind, like how I read him, he has like these cluster B personality disorder traits that um, include a, that he is the center of the universe for him. Like he really, he doesn't think about other people. Everything does revolve around him. And I think it is like that all the time. And I think that is why he and Lydia have like a weird fucking relationship that they have because they're the same in that way. And Mm -hmm. in some ways they were able to like give each other supply, but um, but then they wanted the same thing. And so like ultimately 
uh, you can't have, you can't have two, we can't have two alphas in a relationship, you know? You cannot have two swords in the same she. That to me just sounds gay. It's, it is actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, did I just like ruin an ancient you know proverb that? or something by comparing them to penises? It is a it is a South Asian proverb. I'm sorry, I just was you cannot up. have two swords in the same sheath. That said, the word vagina literally means sheath. Like a, oh, but a, a okay, I've seen porn you, where you can fit sense. two swords in one sheath at the same time. I've yeah, I've <laughs> seen that too. That's not a just out of curiosity. Don't judge. I me. admire people who are able to do that. I'm like, dude. Oh yeah, takes practice takes uh, like physical warm-ups like yeah that's perfect those leave that work <laughs> to the professionals don't try this at home you know like don't try safe, this at home is all i'm saying <laughs> yeah I'm but if it's your that. passion um, it's your dream i support you go for it so he's a piece of shit 100 <sighs> and he doesn't take her back uh which means she's dodged a bullet so. yeah and i know like it must feel so fucking painful because I I have several times dodged a bullet, but I couldn't see until like years later that I had dodged a bullet in the moment. Mm-hmm. It was horrible heartbreak and it's so fucking painful, painful and it takes so long to be able to just like see it for what it is. Um, and I, I hope she's at least there by now, but like I just, you can see on her face and it was in her demeanor. Like she's already so heartbroken. It's going to be really hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel for her, but at the same time, I feel like now looking back at the show, she probably feels like, all right, I may have dodged a bullet there with Luce. Uh, Yeah. I hope so. Um, So I do want to say, uh, so Uche posted a bunch of stuff today on his Instagram, like addressing this scene and basically saying that the truth was very different because w- what's <laughs> okay. So the like last line pretty much of this scene is he says like, um, I think we're, we're done here or something like, um, honestly, let me just see exactly what it is because I have it. Oh, yeah. Also, his whole thing about like his parents never abandoning each other, but like she abandoned him was like, she, this is such a specific situation. Like, you can't generalize it to anything else. Why are you trying to generalize this to like how she'll deal with things in marriage? She was stuck in. In a tiny room with somebody screaming at her. Like, that's a... And she didn't mean... Like... Oh, yeah. And also, I will say this too. My one caveat in my love and support for Aaliyah is I did think the, like, following, unfollowing message, delete the message, like, that made me go, oh, yikes, yeah. <laughs> yikes, hon. Don't do that. Yeah, there was a lot of... So on the one hand, I see how bad that sounds, but on the other, I've done that sometimes. I think most people have. I just but uh, this was I a long time ago. Well, I it was the long the last time I did that was my gosh, a long time ago. Oh wait, two thousands two thousands was the last time I did that. But um, I honestly think I just I'm I try to avoid embarrassing myself so much that I just even if I want to do that stuff, I don't let myself do it. I still feel very embarrassed about what happened in the 2000s that one time. I I do that all the time where like suddenly I'm embarrassed about something I fucking said 10 years ago. It sucks. I'm like, it's 1 a.m. Let's not talk about embarrassing things. It's 3 a.m. for me. Um, Hold on one second. Okay, so, oh yeah, so Uche just declares at the end, this wasn't really about Lydia. You didn't have you didn't have confidence in me. 
You didn't have confidence in our relationship. I think it's over between us. Mm-hmm. And so she says, I understand. And so Uche says that he never said, I think it's over between us. That is like a production invented that, which is very interesting because either he's lying or he said something like, well, I'm not saying I think it's over between us. And they cut out the first part and massively and ridiculously like changed so what his did he, what does he say he said? Um, I mean, what he, basically what he says is that just the tone was very different than that he and Aaliyah were very happy to see each other and that they ended up deciding that they would date after that. Right? And I was like, I don't... He's just I as untrustworthy as the producer, That's, so it's like, I don't know. I I'm going to ex- wait to hear Aaliyah's no, uh, perspective. You know, he's an unreliable witness at this point. Yes, I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't trust him at all. But I do find it very. I did not feel oh. like Aaliyah was very happy by his reaction. I mean, he was pretty mean. Um, uh, what something very interesting though. This is one thing I actually like. I liked that he said is he said that now that he has seen the show and seen all that like Aaliyah went through with Lydia, he's actually like really amazed that she was able to stay that long he's like i would have absolutely left too Mm -hmm. like she she did the right thing in leaving i just i wish i had known the whole situation if i had really understood it then i would have done things very differently she tried everything to tell you i'm sorry she she literally yeah he wasn't you just didn't trust her yeah no this is this is unreal this you are not remorseful i don't think he's remorseful i feel like he is getting a lot of hate <laughs> he's trying to come up with ways but we need to hear from Aliyah because yeah. if if this is huge if true if the fact that like yeah because we really felt like that was it yeah i mean gosh for Aliyah's sake know? i was hoping no Aliyah doesn't show now up I'm again scared like uh oh are they dating no. now i hope not i'm scared for Aliyah. Aliyah, protect yourself he's Scary, and I think he will hit you someday. Honestly, he's—you can hear it in someone's You're voice. In danger, girl. Ah. I want to do that. I don't. I, I want to do that. That thing Whoopi Goldberg does in, in yeah. Ghost. She's like, "You in danger, girl." <laughs> you know? Yeah. Great movie, wanna, though. I love it. I, I'm just gonna do. You are in danger. Because <laughs> you want to say it without trying to do a Whoopi impression. You mm-hmm. aren't danger, girl. You are in danger, Mm -hmm. girl. I don't know. Um, So, your situation is hazardous. (laughs) You are in danger. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) moving on to Stacy and Izzy go to Izzy's house, and wow, there's just so much weird shit that happens here. Oh God, this is where we finally figure out who Izzy is. Uh, Okay, let's start with. His live, laugh, love type decor everywhere. Where he he even acknowledged, like, it's a very Hobby Lobby kind of house. Like, yeah. Who? It has no personality. Yeah. It's like somebody who doesn't know what a personality is approximating one. Like, you went to the Hobby Lobby and got the things that you think make a personality. It's not you, that's for sure. If anything... It, like, externalizes this thing that we already know about him, which is that he's just a chameleon who – he's just a fucking salesman mm-hmm. who just mirrors people back to themselves. Like, mm-hmm. you won't even – you won't even have an individual identity in your own house. Like, yikes. No. And and then we get to find out about his dishes. It is Did that bother you? Glasses. It, it, it really bothers Stacey. It didn't bother me. So so let me let me tell you why it bothered okay. me. It didn't bother me. I mean, there was a point where I was like, should I just move to disposable dishes and mm-hmm. stuff because of my disability and back pain all the time and stuff? Um, and then I decided against it. Um, so, and I know people who went that route because of disability. But you have a house and in this house you are 
Like it just, yeah. It looks like you just don't really have any feelings about any of this. Um, a little bit like a serial killer's Not having killer's feelings apartment. when you just never talk contract about it. Contract killer's apartment. What? Like a contract killer's apartment. Yeah, like think about it. Like you, none of this stuff will leave DNA. Like you, you can get rid of it. You don't have to clean the dishes. You just throw them away. <laughs> you know? Yeah, honestly, the the fact that a lot of disabled people like use pla- you know, um, plastic uh, silverware and cups and stuff like is why that does not bother me because like I've definitely just yeah. I've made that change in my head to like. If there's something you need to do because that's the thing that's stopping you from being able to, like, take care of yourself in some way. Like, if you fucking – you hate dishes so much that you you won't cook, you won't eat because you can't stand to do the dishes and it makes that big of a difference to you to, like, just have some fucking paper plates. Yeah. Then, like, do that. So, like, do I think that's what Izzy has done? I have no fucking idea. Um but like in general, the yeah. concept doesn't bother me because of that. Yeah, it's just in the case of Izzy, it's uh, whatever the whatever his reasons might be. Stacy's reaction is just explosive. She's very unhappy about the fact that he doesn't have actual. She takes everything um, so seriously. <laughs> and it has to do slightly. I mean, the dishes thing kind of has to do a little bit about her obsession with having like multiple uh glass dishes and like crystal and whatnot but she's rich yeah like you can afford that stuff maybe other people can't afford she's to have got very those fucking things. snooty like yeah. first class like are the lifeboats going to be seated according to class like she think yeah no no she just seems She's she's a daddy's girl and that, oh well we find that out. Soon. That's another thing. We're gonna find that uh, out. Um, we we We're well we find don't that find out this out for sure, it. but I'm quite sure. You know her job title all this time has been operations manager. I'm like she works for her dad. She, I you put you have she this big dad. fucking like self story about like I work so hard and blah, blah, blah. And just like you have a rich yeah. dad who gave you a job and your grandma gave you a house and yeah. everything has been handed to you and you feel like you earned it. So wow. you judge yeah. everyone else. Now I have, th- to me, now we've seen the real not Stacey only do you and judge I do not else. like her. I don't like her. No, I don't think I like Stacy. I mean, the reason, now we know why. I because mean, also, one of the okay, things... No, I mean, one of the things that I was going to say, though, one of the things that makes you interesting, that shows vulnerability, that shows growth, is going out there and doing things in the world yourself. Then you have like a whole bunch of stories of how you survived and growth and like hard moments, rough moments, vulnerable moments, transformative moments. Stacy has none of those things because she's just yeah. lived a life of complete comfort and everything's always been taken for care of by her dad. Like every time she tells Izzy this when they're in her house about how she tells that with she really wants no him to get everything done. Yeah, she's like, if if it doesn't get, I mean, it's gonna get done. It's just my dad's going to do it. Like, like if no one else does I don't like it. when they just and assume my that my dad's going to pay for it, which he probably will. It's like, but I, I hate to see him do that. I'm like, sorry. Congratulations that you are rich and congratulations. So like, boo-hoo, it makes you so sad to watch your dad pay for stuff that he can afford. Fuck you. Like, yeah, there's my family doesn't have anything like this, not a shred like this. And like, if my yeah. dad could fucking pay for all of my life expenses at the drop of a hat easy peasy i would uh accept it and i wouldn't <laughs> like be like oh my, my poor my poor poor dad but also i would yeah. recognize like this is such a gift it's not something i earned it's just something i got and now i owe more to the world oh, because God. 
I have more to give. But like, no, she has the privilege of saying, "That's because yeah, I didn't grow up with this money. She did, so she acts like she, she acts like the fact that her father splurges all this money on her is because she's amazing, not because her dad, like she's a rich person's daughter. Yeah, I mean, and so when the demands she make. The demands she makes are just like ludicrous. Yeah. Like you're like laughing at them. Like she's talking about how she never wants to do 50 <laughs> 50. Yeah. As soon as she said that, I was like, do you know that we are in 2023? It's weird. And just a third of Americans <sighs> are struggling with paying bills. And you just, you are, this is where you are. Wow. That's Ooh, the thing is like good to know. rich people like <laughs> these people. Uh, how they allow themselves to keep being so fucking rich and not helping other people and not feeling bad about it is they have to tell themselves a story of they earned it and other people have earned their poverty. And so they truly convince themselves that, oh, they just work harder than everybody else. They've yeah. taken the risks. They, uh, they have good ideas. And anyone else could do yeah. that if they wanted. But just because not only do they not want to fucking share or help other people they don't even want to feel bad for a second about the fact that they won't i have no no it's it's the rationalization no respect stacy don't ever talk to me there's no respect for stacy anymore (laughs) oh my gosh um yeah stacy stacy is unhappy about that and stacy gets um yeah Sorry, oh no, guys. she's at the, the lost and found drawer. drawer. Yeah, it starts because she's like, why don't you have any nightstands? Oh, like, girls like to have nightstands to put their jewelry on and stuff. And he's like, oh, well, I don't need that. I've got the yeah. lost and found drawer. And she's like, excuse me, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And it's where all the things that girls have left. Yeah, so like, as how. this is... This is fascinating, and I've actually spent a lot of time now talking and thinking about it. Even though now I'm so mad at Stacey, like, at several times, she still, like, has some valid points to make. So, like, oh, this shit's so complicated. But please, yeah, what what would you think – what did you think of this this uh, lost and found drawer? Or if it happened lost to you, like, wh- what would you think about it? Uh, if it happened to me. So I have proposed to someone or they've proposed to me and they were about to get married and – I go to check out their place and I go in and they have like a, a little corner for things from people that she's maybe dated or they've, you know, he, she, they, whatever they've done. Um, but literally she's like, I don't like, even oh, know yeah, who's, just, who's those are. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, my friend, welcome to <laughs> welcome to my world. Like, it's full of shit that I've acquired over time that I have no idea how it showed up in my life. It just happens to be here. Uh, I understand. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't do the way that you do things, but, you know, do whatever works for you. Like, I don't care. I think so how I read it and I had a really hard time seeing it any other way than that. This is not a big deal. It doesn't mean anything. Because if it was me, which also like logically I know, I cannot interpret other people based off of what it would mean if it was me. Izzy is not autistic. So whatever my reasoning is, is not going to be his. But I feel like I don't have, I didn't have like a pattern to fit this into. And I didn't have any reference points for it really. So like the only thing you could fall back on to is like, well, what makes sense to me? And what makes sense to me is that if somebody stayed at my house and they left something there, I wouldn't want to throw it away because what if they ask for it back? And so you just put it in like a drawer or a bucket or something. Mm -hmm. And then you never fucking think about it again. Um, The same way that I have drawers full of dead batteries and like, you know, Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the shoelace that like, I don't see all of the chargers. So Yeah. And that makes me sound like a hoarder, but I'm not. It's just an ADHD shit. Like, no, it's just it's practical. I mean, what do you do? I feel like also it's just out of sight, out of mind. Like, we don't have good like object permanence as as ADHD. I think it's also kind of like a territory thing. Like, just basically, she's pissing around him and being like, (laughs) and the only thing around this 
piss circle allowed is you, me, and things that I approve of. And I don't approve of this. And she gets super mad about this. Yeah. Like the- I, I found it really shocking and weird. But here's the thing I want to say. I think we're both wrong, even though our opinions make sense to me, obviously. But what I've learned is, especially when it comes to, like, interpreting neurotypical people, um, if Frida disagrees with me, she's right and I'm wrong. Um, Because she can understand neurotypical people in a way I cannot. And so I watched this episode with her, and she was like, like Stacy's argument is what made sense to her, and she, and she was not on like on Izzy's side at all. Like she did not think Stacy was overblowing it. She thought it was a big deal. And I was like, "What? What? Like you have to explain yeah, this to it. me." I don't understand. And she explained it to me for a long time, and I was like, "You know what? It sounds crazy to me. Um, like it seems like such a leap." So I just like I believe you. But it's like I'm having to just like agree to believe you because like logically I know yeah, you yeah, understand yeah, yeah. the situation. But like this doesn't make any inherent sense to me even now. But finally I actually did get a way to look at it that made it finally fucking click and make sense. Because <laughs> if my, somebody fit it into a pattern that I know. Mm-hmm. I saw a TikTok that was like because is he – Izzy had just been because they just have had all these conversations about money um, at her house at Stacy's house. Stacy ha- is very much the one with the power in the relationship right now, and Izzy is very much the one mm. without the power in the relationship. So he wants to regain the status and power in the relationship with what he has. That is valuable or worthy and so what he has that he thinks he can use is his desirability to other women and the fact Mm. that she could lose him because there are so many other women interested in him so he intentionally he says that he didn't want to show off but like i who yeah and that's the thing so like they they were saying oh he intentionally did this to like basically flaunt that all of his conquests in her face and that just was it didn't make sense to me until like oh because she was super he was down in the status game and he wants to come back up and uh because we live in a misogynistic society slash he's also a misogynist he's like the way to get her is to show like i can fuck somebody else and uh, lots of girls like me and basically to make her jealous and it didn't it didn't play out well it didn't work um no no he had to like he had to be like i didn't i obviously didn't put this there to like flaunt my whatever <laughs> which if somebody uh, is saying i but, didn't do this like a lot of times you have to do sounds like you did do that um hmm. also frida pointed out that like the lost and found drawer had some things like bobby pins in it which like nobody's gonna come back for that that has no value. So at that point, it does feel like trophy keeping from people like whose names you don't even know. And when she started describing it, that was like, oh, that is creepy. That is creepy. I thought it was like. That's not a lost and found drawer. Yeah. I think that's, that's part of it. That it I was taking the drawer. name of the drawer to literally. That's some memories. This is the memories that I fapped to drawer. <laughs> Um, what's that called when serial killers like take something? <laughs> no, literally, that's what's going on. Like he, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm like, uh, I hope that it's not that creepy. But yeah, literally, you keep things like that, yeah. from people that you've, yeah. Um, maybe he's into that because like that kind maybe, of accusation maybe, at first. Maybe she thought maybe he was into that, and that's why she got angry. That's the thing, and a lot like, of stuff. and just all of that felt like. So such leaps so wild to me like i can't mm-hmm. but then but this is why i really appreciate having somebody like frida who can like really help me see this stuff and point it out because mm-hmm. it i'm still thinking yeah like a lost and found it might be an earring somebody like wants or you know something important but you know a bobby pin there Some is no reason pens. to hold on to that that is why yeah at that point it's like why do you have it 
Um, and and for me, it wouldn't have meant anything for me to not get rid of it before uh, Stacy got there. But neurotypical people always mean something. They always have an, another motive and intention behind everything they say and do. So he did do it on purpose. He did show it to her on purpose. And he was trying to make her feel like um, – make her feel less secure in their relationship so that he could regain some of the power back. And once I could see it in that pattern, which I know and can recognize, I was like, oh shit, it does make sense. They're right. And I'm wrong. They both suck. Oh, for sure. Um, I meant like Frida is right and I'm wrong. Not like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They're right. They're absolutely right. Yeah. But yeah, it is weird watching like two um, horrible people. Just like be, I'm oh like, you guys are both so bad. Is this where they get into a fight? Yes, I mean because she she really can't let the drawer thing go. She's really mad about it, and um, and then like he does this pissy thing, which I don't. It goes bad every time you see somebody do this. Um, she's just trying to. She's just responding. Somebody said, "Can you let me finish?" And she's like. I'm out. And so she goes outside and she's sobbing. And that's kind of it. Like, and he goes out there and gives her a back yeah. hug. I love but you. But like, I feel like we, I don't know, who, <clears throat> the character you see in somebody when they're, when they are pushed against the fence, you know, like that's who they are. Yeah. And so like who he is, in that conversation with Stacy where she's really trying to get like she's trying to get to the bottom. Why mm. do you have this? Why did you show it to me? And sort of like he puts on this weird defensive face that like is creepy. <laughs> and it's like that's who he is, not the guy who hugs her afterward. That's that's him like yeah. doing things right again. That's him, the, he's back in salesman mode. Because, like, he miscalculated. He tried to manipulate her Selling with something himself. that, like, would only work on somebody who's, like, a decade younger than her. Like, come on. Get real, bro. Also, she's yeah. rich. She's been raised to have lots of self-esteem. You're not going to be able to do your garden variety negging on her. If you want to manipulate her, you're going to have to step up your game a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to have a lot more money. Yeah, this is never going to work. Otherwise, you just walk also, away. He w he's one of those yeah, guys who's like, he'll feel emasculated. And, you know, like, barf, barf, barf. I mean, he's, he's already emasculated because he's bald. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like, for a person like this, for a person, like, for narcissistic people like Stacy and Izzy, like, no wonder he brought that up. Like, he brought yeah. that up because he sees that he constantly thinks about it as like this major flaw. He would try to make perfect, it sound like but he would have. He's been so and yeah. honestly, and I loved it. It was so sweet of you, but you were even like you were really empathetic about it. You were like, "That was really horrible what he's been through." And I'm like, "No, he's bullshitting. Like he's fine." <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! But that's it, yeah. Oh, but um, it's so hard to be me. I'm so we go back to what Milton and Lydia. So yes, Lydia and Milton meet because those are the only two couples left at <laughs> yeah. this point. You go from Milton and Lydia to, to, to William <laughs> and Lydia <laughs> Senior. So this is meeting Lydia's family, and I will say William, the brother, fantastic, love him. Um, he gets it. I like him. Lydia Senior, that's where. It all comes from. She is the problem has just like been passed down. Also, like naming your kid after yourself is weird. And there is a tra even like there is a tradition of it for men. So like there shouldn't be a double standard, but I, there are situations mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, it's a family name, Matthew. Let's do it again, you know? So that, like, it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be motivated by just, like, pure ego. Um, but as a woman, it's unusual. So you have to, like, really stand up for your right to name your kid the same fucking thing as you. So, like, 
to be Lydia and name your kid Lydia, like, I think that says a lot in itself and is weird. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really, I saw the conversation and I wasn't like, yeah, like the mom was, I felt like I need to see a conversation with Milton's mom. <laughs> Um, yeah, but that's also, you know, Milton has a yeah. bad relationship with his family and they're kind of abusive. So I'm also like, I don't want to, I don't want to read too much into his family because clearly like he isn't that close with them. But um, mm-hmm. I think he does fucking great with uh, Lydia and William though. Lydia's yeah. family. Yeah, yeah no, Lydia's mom is totally yeah. sold. And he's Lydia's like, he's totally genuinely sold. killing it. I mean, this is one of the few moments where it's like, Gosh, their relationship actually like kind of feels real. <laughs> like, yeah, they're no Milton is real. Milton is the realest person here. Everyone else has told us lies. Yeah, because honestly, I did kind of think he was just sort of like going along with it. But like at this point, to be able to be this this good of a partner to Lydia, like with her parents and stuff, like. He does have to mm-hmm. actually really care about her and listen to her and understand her. And um, I don't think that's reciprocal. I don't think that's like, I don't think it's enough. But um, I do think it is actually serious and real for him, which I had been uh, underestimating. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, do we now move to Izzy meeting the parents? Yes. So we're going to Stacy's dad's s- somewhat smaller mansion that he had to move out of the giant mansion after they got, you know, a divorce and had to split all their s- many, many assets. Yeah. Um, it, like, s- <laughs> something weird to me is, that, like, on social media, I-, I have only really seen people, like, loving this dad, like, calling Izzy, like, a broke dude like <sighs> and i'm like i don't think all of y'all are millionaires so this is what i want so like why are you like we we can't identify with him he's not uh, us no we can't he basically just repeats he just parrots what stacy t- says he's like yeah she's just used to like having this lifestyle and basically you're gonna have to make a lot of money and throw it at her otherwise she's gonna be unhappy and he lets them know that, like, he will pay for it eventually if if no one else does, you know? So they act like, like they don't like to talk about money, and then it's her. all they fucking talk about. They interrogate him yeah, about, will you be able to afford about. this? Will you be able will, will you be able to pay for this for her? And also, like, why? That is love to them. Will you be able to pay for this for her? Like, God, that's fucking sad. I feel like I interrupted yeah, you. I'm I mean, sorry. I, I'm very me, passionate like, about this part, apparently. No, no, no. You did not. No, you did not. It was like, it's just now you really kind of understand where Stacy's coming from. Hell. You know, that's kind of all they ever talk about. It's money this, money that. Yeah. I, um, gosh, getting to really see who she is, I don't like it. Also, the, so the scene with the dad, too, where it's like, You know, sure, love is great, but, like, love needs to eat. Love needs a roof over its head. Sometimes love wants to fly first class. Oh, my Um, God. Right. I've seen people people love this. It's been going around social media like, oh, yeah. Um, No. This made me mad again because this has nothing to do with eating. This has nothing to do with having a roof over your head. This has everything to do with flying first class. Like, Izzy has every ability to provide for your daughter so that she will never go hungry. Izzy has every ability to provide for your daughter so that she will have a roof over her head. Those are not the same thing as being able to fucking fly first class. Like, don't conflate, like, basic survival needs with just, like, the extremely fancy life you like to have. And I almost feel like, as someone who's like, I haven't always had enough money for food. I have gone hungry i have asked people to please like i'm so sorry will you please buy me food i'm so hungry he's never had that they've never had that so like Mm. take that fucking shit out of your mouth you don't like it's insulting to me to act like 
they're I mean, this is also like in the I think it was in the previous episode too. Like Stacy's like, I never want to have to worry about money. You don't. You've never had to, you never will have to. And so it's like these people pretending that there's any sort of struggle financially in their lives makes me furious. Mm. It makes me furious. First class tickets is their struggle. Like go to hell A S A P. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um yeah. So do we move back to is do we move back to Milton and Lydia or is this when we finally get the party? It's the party. It's the party. It's the party. Oh my so god. So we're getting so the whole pod squad back together. We're getting all the pod squad back together, which means that Johnny and Izzy are going to finally meet. And it, 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 but before that happens, we see Johnny come in with Chris. So, okay, here. Yeah. What did, what did you think? Cause then I'll share, I'll share my opinion. What do, what do you think of this, this twist? First of all, were you, uh, were you surprised? And what do you think? I mean, I was surprised, but then when I learned how they got together, I wasn't surprised. Like I was surprised that they were together, but then it made sense. I was like, "How did they?" But then yeah, it made sense. I feel the same way. I was surprised. Uh, Johnny, starts, but then they're sort of like, "Oh yeah, yeah." I mean, apparently, once it was over, they are going back home from Mexico, and they see each other at the airport, and they kind of know. And I feel like this is a made-up story. Okay, I feel like when they went home. They got in touch with each other and met up after. Why? But the plane, the airport story makes it. It's like a, a nice little face. I believe story. the airport story because I know that they put these people. They do put these people on the same flights, and so there are lots of stories of them meeting mm. in the airport after. Like, there are lots of. Yeah, yeah, there are Airport stories, stories of people being from at, at the, going home from Love is Blind. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I believe it. Yeah, no, but I feel like Johnny and Chris met at the airport. This is my feeling. Okay. They met at the airport and they knew each other. And yeah, I mean, they had a real connection. And it's very different when you see someone in person. And they obviously liked what they saw. <laughs> you know, there's a, it's a very, very, different thing to walk away from a voice the other day to walk away from a person who's standing right in front of you who you could make out with and like hug and you know and you've been wanting to do all those things you know it's like right in front of you um i totally do it um so i'm not surprised that chris and uh johnny did it am i happy for them <laughs> uh yeah sure why not? I mean, whatever makes people happy, makes them happy. Um, and it's at this point <laughs> that things just go off the fucking Hold on, rails. I want to share my opinion about it. Okay, <laughs> let's go. So. Tell us. Weirdly enough, I've n I have not been rooting for a single couple this entire season. But now I am. I'm, I'm rooting for Johnny and Chris. Um, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, she is transformed. Like, she was, con she constantly looked sad the entire time we've known her. And she has this, like, mm -hmm. happiness in her being now that is clearly real. So, like, and she and Chris mm -hmm. have a, a dynamic and a chemistry that you can see. You can see it's comfortable and kind. And, um, and there's really something there. Hmm. It's, it's not like consolation prizes or anything, you know, like there, mm -hmm. if anything, yeah, she was just, for whatever reason, she was, she was actually the one who was making a fear-based choice and running away from the real thing. But then when the real thing, you know, came up to her in the airport and she saw it face to face, she was like, Dang, all right, I'm going to get ready. Mm -hmm. And then 
what I was. She also saw Izzy face to face at the party and was like, "Okay, maybe I dodged a bullet." Yeah, there. That, like that's the thing too because she's clearly so in love with Chris that like, I mean, we'll get there, but like she she's she has no energy for Izzy in that way at all at all. Um, yeah, but. Yeah. What I was really impressed with. But Izzy has energy. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> what I was really impressed with about Johnny, because I didn't really know that she was capable of this, but this makes such a huge difference. She's incredibly emotionally honest and she's mm. able to see what she did wrong. And she's really, um, she's making amends for it. She's accepting that responsibility. She the way when she says i'm i'm making up to chris for him being like my second choice even the fact like she's not changing her story now to like oh no i really did always love chris the most she's like no i was fucking wrong he was my lover too and i was wrong he's the most amazing person he's allowing me another chance and i'm so grateful for that she's really she's working for this this is not the first time this has happened this is not the first time that this has happened to a couple, right? Remember, we had this in the last season where somebody made the wrong choice. Oh, yeah. And they had to go back and be like, please take me back. And now they're married. And that's the thing. I think this is kind of a similar situation where it's like, once you saw Zach and mm-hmm. Bliss together, it was like, yeah, forget any of that. Oh, she's the second choice, like narrative nonsense. No, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they are totally meant severe. to be. And... Chris and Johnny look so fucking happy together. We've never seen her this emotionally healthy, this honest with herself, um, this mature, like, but also I think she's really acknowledging the the hurt that she caused and mm-hmm. she's working on it. She's fixing it. Like what was always frustrating about her is – that she wasn't able to be honest about herself. She wasn't able to. You know, that's why she gave what people thought were conflicting stories about, like, what her patterns were and stuff. Because mm. she wasn't able to take a clear look at herself and see, this is my pattern. But now, it, part of it is just, like, now she has actually found love. And so she can step, she has stepped outside of that toxic pattern. And she can see it. So you're a believer? Um, I'm a believer in their connection for sure. I don't know for sure because she like she needs therapy. She needs healing. Will she be able to do that enough and quickly enough to not fuck up this relationship? You know, um, maybe. I hope so. Totally depends. Um. Johnny, who we saw on the pods, I would not think had a good chance of that. But this Johnny, like, and this ability to, like, see herself clearly and honestly and bravely, I'm like, she's she's off to a great start. Like, I think it's great. Okay, now let's talk about Izzy and Johnny. <laughs> All right, so now that you've given us all these awesome things about Johnny that you feel, yes, let's talk about the fact that Izzy shows up and he's like, hey, Johnny, I kind of just want to talk to you. Like, can we have a chat? And Johnny uh, is like, sure, let's go have a chat. And Izzy basically starts to shame her for what he perceives as duplicitous behavior. I was shocked. And and it's not even like, it's not like a little, let's remove some misunderstanding or whatnot. He just starts to like seriously create conflict. He wants to have, like he wants to have a conflict where she is broken down and like. Thing, he, this is his like, moment where he. Yeah. He establishes he, cruel as he establishes his role in the theme of this season, men who get off on being cruel to women. He wants to hurt her. Yeah. He's enjoying it. He he started he like initiated this thing, conversation just because he wanted to hurt her. What a fucking weirdo. Yeah, it's so fucked up. 
It's so and he still up thinks he's because like, there's like, no the reason better you, person than right. Yeah, there's no reason you have yeah. to. Like, like I, there's absolutely I no fully reason thought you have it was to. just going to be like a what of normal fucking closure conversation, like happens all of mind all the time. Yeah. Like, hey, it's good to meet you. You know, like no hard feelings. We ended up with the right person. But no, then he's like, I'm so glad I, mean, I honestly, picked Stacy. I felt like You're- Izzy should have just apologized. I felt I feel like Izzy should have apologized because Izzy led Johnny on. I mean, and I don't think she needs that because I think she's but instead, extremely fucking over him. But I did at least think he was just going to no, like no, I mean, smooth things over. But no. Yeah, I, I think that's no, no, no. He's his. He basically wanted to start a conflict and hurt. Her, oh yeah. Uh, despite the fact that there was no reason for him to like do any of that. Yeah. Um, if you want to say that he's trying to do this to protect. Chris, well, Chris already knows everything. You told him everything when you were in the pods, and he's made his yeah. choice. Like, like Chris is an he, adult man who, first of all, knows way more about this woman and the situation than you do, and has chosen even today, right now, here to be with her and to love her. So, actually, if you care about him, you have to support him in that choice. Like, no, instead, he's just gonna go there and like say mean things to her. And once Johnny starts crying and goes to talk to Chris. He goes to Stacy, well, who is for 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 reasons that I don't know why, is extremely mad at Johnny. Okay, and- I do know why, but also I want to clarify how their conversation ends because I think it's really important. So he's just ripping into her, ripping into her, ripping into her, and she's honestly, she's like, uh, the first part, she's everything you've said is accurate. Like I did do that. I did say these things. Um, and then she explains sort of like – because, yeah, she said things that may have sounded like they conflicted. But really, as a, I, I remember we talked about in previous episodes, like they were part of one narrative. <laughs> like, um, and she wasn't like intentionally misleading anybody. She was just like confused about her emotions and shit. Um, and, but So like she's not being defensive. She's not arguing. She's just like, you're right. I did do those things. <clears throat> like clearly she's in a very good place of taking accountability. Um, but then he just like keeps going and keeps going. So then his his accusation is you're sketchy as fuck. Everyone here thinks you're sketchy as fuck. Hey. Which yeah. I'm sorry. That's the vaguest accusation I've ever heard. Like personally, I don't think it would be possible to hurt my feelings by telling me I'm sketchy as fuck because I'm like, That's what does it what is- mean? Yeah. Like I know what it means but like what does it mean in context with me like i don't care um and so and she's like oh and she's she's just she's not taking the bait she's not taking the bait she's not taking the bait and then eventually she's like you know what this conversation isn't going anywhere i don't need to have it you're not listening to me anyways and so he's like everyone here thinks you're sketchy as fuck and she just says y'all are the sketchy ones like i'm done with this Bye. She gets up mm-hmm. and then she goes over to Chris and she cries and she feels horrible and he comforts her and he's like, that's not how people see you. Just that, that's him. And I hope Chris, you know, yeah. yelled at him later. <laughs> but yeah. So, okay. Then Izzy goes over to Stacy. He's like, Stacy, Stacy, Stacy. <laughs> I ripped you. Something. I reamed her. He's like, <sighs> he's like, he's just killed an animal with his bare teeth and the blood yeah. is dripping down his chin and that's where you realize how horrible of a person stacy is because they're both so fucking that. awful yeah you realize that they had had a conversation about this and stacy was just like yeah go for it it's so <laughs> like if you had a chance i'd be cool it's with so it. gross oh my gosh because also so i do know why she, why stacy's mad at johnny and it wasn't cool what johnny did but it was when she was – when Izzy had broken up with her, she was like, I think that he's going to regret choosing Stacy because, like, um, they don't have as strong of a connection. And, uh, like, that's just not going to work out. I'm the one he should have chosen. And that made Stacy really bad. But, like, that – and while I don't – I don't think Johnny should have been – comforting her ego that way i don't think that's healthy that is what Mm -hmm. she was doing she was hurt and she was trying to make herself feel better it wasn't about 
Stacy yeah. and shitting on Stacy. And how John and how Izzy had bad credit. Yeah. So it's like Stacy, just- you got the guy. You're fine. Like, let it go. Your dad's rich and you're yeah. 33. No, it's the vindictiveness. Yes. Like the petty vindictiveness. Not only do I want to win, I want to tear the her head off of her corpse and parade it around I the city. Hurt her. Like it's yeah. fucking gross and weird. Um, and yeah, even just the way it, I don't know, it's like we get to see even some interviews with Stacy where she says she just talks in a way that's very mean. That like they hadn't really shown us that very much earlier. Mm. And that made me think like, why were they making Stacy look nicer than she is? Because yeah, like Johnny's a fucking joke. Stacey She's nicer. a joke. Like it's very it's empathy free way to talk about somebody. Yeah, and like at and at this point too, just there's no point in pursuing any of this and bringing it up and grinding it in like Johnny isn't mm-hmm. interested in Izzy anymore she's not trying to go after him she is ha- like leave her alone move on with your life but yeah they need someone else to hurt because that feels good and the way he like I think even I honestly I think it to the level to which he gets off on this even freaks out Stacy a little bit. Where she's like, Whoa, you're like really worked up. Because, like, yeah, yeah, he's he's like, I'm gonna go jack off thinking about it, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna go use use the lost and found <laughs> items to take care of some things. <laughs> it's like this to me, I'm like, this is who as he is, because this is but a then- definitive moment. Because most people would never, ever act like this, would never, ever do something like this. If you do something like this, even once, it means something about who you are. And then something even worse happens. <laughs> we say we see Uche walking in. <laughs> and he comes in and he's like, hey, Lydia, can we have a conversation? And Lydia's like, do we have to? He's like, I don't really want to. And every person knows that that this conversation is not going to end well. OJ is a piece of shit. It went even worse than I thought and it, it would, though. It was I did not horrible. think he was going to come in he, with screenshots of the Instagram stories from like a year ago. It was like, why are you doing this? Why are you yeah. talking to her about this? Why do you need to go over this? Yeah. Like, I can understand, honestly... If I wanted Why to talk to her, the up? only things I would have talked to her about would have been maybe, um, did you come on the show specifically because you knew I was there? And what did you do to Aaliyah? Mm. Like, because that's my woman who I care about. I'm not like, here's all the little things that you have done that bother me over the course of years. And then when she's like, Actually, being the logical one in this situation, which is terrifying, and she's like, "I don't know what the point of this conversation is. I don't need to have it." Because as you can see in this moment too, she's over Uche now. Like she's she's moved yeah. on. She as a, Johnny's over Izzy. Yeah. Like Izzy and Uche walk in as if like these people are still yeah. into them. They think they own their and... heart. No, 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 no. They you you were like a symbol to them and you don't represent that thing anymore. Yeah. And, no. and then, but then when Uche just keeps saying, I'm just telling you how I feel as she's walking away. It's like, why do you think your feelings are so important? They're really not. She's looking for Milton. She, one of the things that happens is Milton comes in to try to end this conversation. Like, God, I fucking hate Uche. Like, I loved how Milton handled this. This was a moment where it was like, yeah. he is mature for 24. Because when he comes, he says, sure, yeah, you um, you can talk to Lydia a little more. But actually, Lydia and I have plans in 10 minutes. And that's yeah. a boss ass move. Because that's like, I'm going to come back and yeah, yeah. get her away from you. Get your shit because, done. Because like, like, he knows she doesn't want to be there. So it's not controlling in any way. It's limiting uh, – the amount of yeah 
amount of this that she's going to have to put up with from Uche. And like, but not in a, it's not an aggressive way, but it's also a very like, you know, he's not fucking around. Like, I thought yeah. he handled that in a perfect way. I really loved it. No, he handled it well. It's just that I did not expect Uche to continue to be a piece of shit. Uche just, and... like, boggles the mind. <laughs> so Lydia has to get up and look for Milton. And while she's gone, Uche finds Milton. And <laughs> he's like, I want to tell you something. And that's where it ends. And that's what's so frustrating, too, is I actually, if he wanted to tell Milton, I know, because apparently he knows, that Lydia came on this show specifically because she knew I was on it. She was trying to get back with me. That is information that could be pertinent to Milton. If she's, you know, using him or something, like, that is something he might need to know. So I could understand him coming to have that conversation. But all the other fucking conversations he's having with Lydia, what are you doing? Why why do you want to rehash everything? Look at this everything? Instagram story. Look at this Instagram story. And like he doesn't realize that like you're the crazy one right now. Like that's it's you. But that's why I don't know, Uche and Lydia, I mean she does scream and say this is the last time you'll ever see my fucking face and I hope that's true because my god, yeah. they are I hope we never see Uche's face. It's again. just like having dynamite and dynamite. It's like <laughs> it's like Uche is like the, sh- the no. I don't want to say Uche is the shake of this season because no, shake was bad, but like this is a different level. Like y'all are shake was a um uh much more of like a just a pig, but much uh less talented at man- manipulation. Like, yeah, Uche gets yeah. in people's heads. But also, yeah. he buys his own bullshit so much that he can't tell when he's not successfully getting in. So what's that? No, no, I think, I think, I think they're going to. I mean, yeah, I think this is going to really fuck up their their shtick for a minute, mm-hmm. as everyone in Houston finds out who they are. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't. That's the thing. And it makes sense to know the kind of personality that he has. The last thing he ever thought was, I will go on this show and it will be revealed to everyone that I'm a bad person. That didn't, that wasn't a possibility. It was just, I, everyone will see how cool I am. I'll get lots of followers. Yeah. Because he thinks that everyone sees him the way he you sees him, he which is look awesome. like You know, like, no, yeah. Yeah. you look like a scary, abusive unhinged person who also uh said that you have ocd when you are just a neat freak and that is uh ableist and annoying stop giving that that's just a side note right. <laughs> um but yeah that's it all right we did it. so we cut it off here we did it and we wait for the other two episodes to drop on friday yeah. and then we'll come back and i can't wait even though this whole I can thing tell is horrible, you. I can give you one it. update. Apparently, okay, yeah, do it. Apparently, apparently, Izzy has <laughs> locked his comments oh, yeah. on Instagram. I love that <laughs> because of everyone coming at him. Um, Yay! Anyway, I'm so glad everyone's mad at him. Time. I like that. <laughs> oh, until next time, until death do us part. Um, we will see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right, Aliens Watching on, Reality bye. TV is hosted by Erica Heidewald and Josh Sharier. It's produced and edited by Erica Heidewald. That's me. And our theme song is Just World by Erica Heidewald, which is also me. Available for streaming on iTunes and Spotify. For $5 a month, you can subscribe to our Patreon and get an extra full-length episode of the podcast every week. Right now, we're covering Love is Blind Season 1. We'd love to hear from you. Our social media links are in the episode notes, or you can write to us at alienswatchingrealitytv at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and as always, until death do us part.